Okay, this is a bit out of order because I've already smoked the pipe and uh, ended the video, but I wanted to do a quick <laughs> intro. <laughs> then I'm going to move to the front of this video because I wanted to make sure you all know that Les Wood from Ferndown Pipes is going to be on our live stream this Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Les is he's going to be a great guest. I talked to him yesterday. really enjoyed the conversation. He started working at Dunhill when he was 15 years old. I mean, this guy's got stories you wouldn't believe. Uh, so I'm looking forward to chatting with him. I'm looking forward to you guys getting a chance to know him better and ask questions. So please, Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, I'll put the, uh, put the notification here and you'll see a notification post for the live stream, uh, in the next few hours. Take care. Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're all doing fine, having a great week. I got my Wednesday favorite basket pipe and um, GLP's Barbary Coast and a girdle. Funny, I've been smoking this pipe all day. It hasn't gurgled. For some reason, it's gurgling now. And I would not call this at all a wet tobacco. That up. So, yeah, Barbary Coast. Uh, it's it's good. I just... It's probably not going to be a... I made it worse. This may require deeper surgery here. Aye, aye, aye. Probably should have got this sorted before I started talking. Oh, wait. There we go. Barbary Coast is good. Um, it's just probably not going to be something I buy again. Not because there's anything wrong with it. It just, you know, got enough other stuff to smoke. <laughs> So, things have been going well. Um, been doing a lot of cleaning up down here in the shop. Uh, finally getting some of the stuff done that I wanted to do. Got my table saw back in a workable condition. It's no longer a junk holder. And I've been making... <laughs> so... I'm working all day, um, but I get these breaks and I got to do something. Uh, oh, I finished a pipe. Let me show you the pipe. You're much more interested in the pipe, I'm sure. And I, I talked about this one at some point, maybe it was during the live stream. I don't remember, but that is a 1952 Dunhill, and this is a new uh, red. Cumberland or brindle stem. Hopefully you can pick up some of the grain in that stem. It's a little hard to see in my monitor. Now the original stem, and this is kind of funny. Hopefully the customer won't mind me showing this. There's the original. See the dot. Note the button. Or lack thereof. And what... Well, I say this is funny. When I first got it, I thought, wow, this is an old pipe. They weren't even putting buttons on them, and they were just doing circular air holes. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's got the Dunhill dip in the button. So I researched the shape, and it turns out somebody cut the stem. <laughs> you know, they must have chewed through it and cut it. And they took the time to file themselves that little curve in the end, but not a button. Very strange. Anyway, it's got a nice new stem. I lengthened it a bit and put a little bit of flare in it to uh, make it more like what I believe the original would have looked like. And uh, that'll be heading back to a happy owner very soon. So, yeah, I, I work all day and I get these, you know, 15 minute breaks, sometimes a half an hour. And if I was at work, that's when I would be thinking. I know that sounds crazy, but 
That's what I do for a living. Writing stuff down sometimes too, but mostly thinking. So I like to keep my hands occupied when I'm thinking, and they, you know, I can file a stamp, I can you know do whatever. So I take advantage of those 15, 30 minute breaks between meetings to, to do stuff down here. And like I said, we've been getting a lot of stuff done, but today I worked on <laughs> these. Now you're probably wondering what this is. It's not a Space Wars flying ship. Um, and I have many of them. So this is uh, a piece of, uh, I don't know what this stuff is called. I, I always called it hardboard. Uh, it's the kind of stuff that you would use to put on the bottom of drawers if the drawers aren't going to be taking a lot of weight. Um, you know, buy it at Home Depot. Uh, so my wife asked me if I could make for her a, so she has these cardboard pieces that she wraps the Christmas lights around. And they came, you know, it was a box that she bought that has these cardboard inserts. And she asked me if I could make one for her and, like, cut it out of a cardboard box. And I said, well, I've got all this stuff left over from a project. Uh, how about I make one out of that? And she said, okay, we'll try it. So I, I designed this to the extent that you design something like this. And I made it, and I, I gave it to her, and she said, oh, this is great. Can can you make more? Can you make a couple more? I said, sure. How many? Fifteen. So, yeah, I can make them. And so off and on, I've been playing with these, and I got them all cut. I got them all uh, shaped the way I like them. It's probably obvious, but you get the plug and it goes through this slot and gets caught in the circle and then you just wind them in an X like that. So yeah, I made 15 of them and if you've ever worked with this hardboard it, it frays out around the edges and it gets all messy and sometimes it chips out on you and stuff. And, you know, it's a, it's a Christmas tree light winder. What's, what's the problem? So sat down and I got some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm about to start sanding this and I thought to myself, wait a minute. Nobody's ever going to see this but me and my wife. It's, it's just for wrapping Christmas tree lights around. Do I really have to sand it? Yeah, can't I just leave those frayed edges? And the answer was no. Can't do that. I don't know why. I, I don't know why it had to be sanded. I don't know. And it's not perfect. You know, it's, it's far from perfect. In fact, this one actually has, maybe you can see I overshot with the bandsaw right here. Somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, it's not perfect. But I couldn't leave those frayed edges. And it got me thinking about the concept of craftsmanship. Something that I know very little about, to be honest. You know, occasionally somebody watches one of my videos and uh, my, my restoration videos, and they'll make a statement like, "Oh, you're a craftsman," or "That's craftsmanship," or something. And you know, I, I appreciate the compliment and I say thank you, but I don't consider myself a craftsman. I really don't. Uh, I think I think craftsmanship takes a lot of time. You know, it's a lifelong endeavor, and uh, I don't think us hobbyists, and let's face it, I'm, I'm really just a hobbyist, um, I don't think we can aspire to it. I don't think there's enough time in our lives. But it's also, so that's the physical part of craftsmanship. You know, you need to develop that muscle memory and learn all the the ins and outs of, of tools and, you know, what can do what and how, you know, sometimes you can use a tool that you would have never thought to use in a situation, but it works and it gets the job done. That kind of stuff requires years and years and years of experience and learning from others and spending time tinkering and trying things. And 
but there's also a mental side of it, a psychological side to it. And this is something that I worry about in our, our modern world, and there's plenty to worry about. Do we have a, do we value craftsmanship? Well, certainly when we see it, we go, oh, that's nice. Well, when's the last time you bought something that was meant to be kept for more than five years? Yeah, we last refrigerator we bought um, had a five-year warranty on it. And I said, you know, do you want to extend the warranty or something? And I said, I don't know. Would, you know. And they said, well, I wouldn't recommend it because the compressor motor usually dies within five years and it'll be cheaper to buy a new refrigerator. But wow, first off, why are they designing compressor motors that die in five years? And why is it cheaper to buy a new refrigerator than replace a motor? That's crazy. But we live in a world that values, that does not value permanence. You know, it, it's, don't buy your car, lease it, because then you get a new car every two years or whatever. I don't know, I've never leased a car. <clears throat> you know, my car is 11, 12 years old, and I plan to drive it until it won't start. And even then, I might get it fixed. Um, it has to, you know, I usually get rid of cars because, you know, the, the frame rusts out or something like that. I don't get rid of cars just to get a new car. You need a new new cell phone every two years. I don't want a new cell phone. I like the cell phone I have, and I really don't want a cell phone, but they're not built to last. And the problem with things like cell phones and laptops is that the software winds up outstripping the hardware. You know, it's, it's basically obsolete by the time you get the thing home. And you're just stuck in this endless cycle of, well, I got to get a new phone because the new operating system's coming out. And it just creates this world where everything is disposable. So where does a craftsman fit in in that world? The guy that made this may or may not have been a craftsman. I mean, this is an ugly basket pipe. I know. But I've got plenty of pipes that I can show you, that, and you've seen them, where I can say the guy that made this was a craftsman. And we value that. We definitely value that. Maybe that's part of why we're attracted to pipe smoking. You know, maybe it's it it is a a way to to get some permanence in this otherwise disposable life that we live. You know, we talk about these as things we're going to pass down. You know, we we have, you know you've heard the story how many times? You know, I'm smoking my grandfather's pipe, or I can't tell you how many pipes I've. I fixed and refurbished that were the smoker's father's pipe or grandfather's pipe or brother-in-law's pipe or whatever. They don't end with us, and they're certainly not disposable. Now, maybe they were. Maybe there was a time when, you know, you could buy that K. Woody for $2.50 because you just smoke it to, until you couldn't fit tobacco in it anymore, and you throw it away and you go get another one. Maybe. I don't know. But now they're not. And we're even picking those, quote, disposable pipes off of eBay, refurbishing them and keeping them going now, you know? We want our pipes to have that sense of permanence. And we value the craftsmanship. That's everything I got. Uh, of course, the furnace started just as I was going to wrap things up. But yeah, I tried to get away with it. Anyway, folks, I, I think I made my point, and I hope you enjoyed that.
This Friday, we got Les Wood, burned down pipes. Les started working at Dunhill when he was 15 years old. I, I talked to him yesterday. He's a great guy. We're going to really enjoy chatting with him, getting to know him a bit better, and asking him questions. So join us Friday night at 8 p.m. for that. And I'll look forward to seeing you there. Take care now.